But first, recent data from the American Academy of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery says that plastic surgery continues to soar with an increase in demand for both facial plastics and cosmetic treatments in 2022. So we have Dr. John Met Mendelssohn here with us. Uh, he is a plastic surgeon as well as the medical director of Advanced Cosmetic Surgery and Laser Center. He's joining us today to talk about what we're seeing here locally um, because First of all, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you taking the time. But we, you and I were just sitting here chatting about the fact that, you know, it's been changing over the last few years. People have been able to kind of look at themselves more because they're on Zoom, whatever the case may be. So they're finding themselves critiquing things that they may have not noticed before. Yeah, I think we have, uh, you know, they call it a Zoom boom, but we continue to see it. I think people are still working from home. Uh, we all are our own worst critics, and uh, but you know, seeing your face constantly while you're talking to somebody else, uh, you know, is, is something that uh, we're, we're critical of. So we're seeing a huge rise in non-surgical treatments, Botox and fillers, but particularly rejuvenation around the eyes. We're seeing a lot of eyelid surgery rejuvenation. When we look at ourselves or when we communicate with each other, you know. Are you angry, sad, tired? And a lot of people are asked, you know, if they're tired even after a good night's rest. So a procedure like an upper blepharoplasty or an upper eyelid surgery is about a 20 to 30 minute procedure performed under local anesthesia. You can see in some of the photos here. And uh, it really just brightens your eyes. And it's, it, it, it helps us communicate with one another. There is no worse question. Are you, are you feeling okay? You don't look I like you're feeling well. And you're like, what? No, I actually felt great about myself until now. Um, but I think a lot of people have some reservations when it comes to plastic surgery. They say, well, when's a good time? You know, um, is there a certain age that people recommend? And I know it's different for every person, but for those who maybe have those reservations on what they should get, when they should get it, what is your answer for that? Yeah, it's such a range depending upon what you consider plastic surgery. If you're talking about Botox, we talk about things like prejuvenation. And kids in their 20s are having Botox so that they don't have that memory crease when they frown. Uh, when we talk about cosmetic procedures like a blepharoplasty or skin treatments or facelifts or rhinoplasties, those are things where patients these days, and probably over the last decade or so, are really coming in at an earlier time, that is, they don't want to see that dramatic before and after. They, they sort of want to live with looking refreshed. Yeah. So even with facial rejuvenation procedures, we've seen people as early as their uh, late 30s and early 40s. And um, something else that's been kind of a topic lately is artificial intelligence, obviously, and how that's really coming into different fields. Does it affect the plastic surgery field as well? Yeah, I think the biggest advantage, at least currently, is what we're doing for preoperative screening. Uh, AI can assist with facial analysis, and it can allow us to sit down with patients and not just look at facial asymmetries, but begin to discuss what expectations you know one should have with procedures. And I think. In terms of assisting with communication, that's huge. There are things from a medical standpoint. Let's say you have a skin lesion, something you're not sure if it's benign or cancerous. Uh, the AI has also been very effective in diagnosing malignancies for skin cancer. Oh, wow. And that's really important. So it does so many different things. And I know one of the biggest uh, questions too is who do I go to? You're saying, hey, come to me because I do a great job, right? Uh, so if people have those questions, they want to make sure they're finding the right person for the right procedure. What is, where do you Yeah, I think in general, and this is something, I think that you want to uh, you want to research a little bit. You probably want to look at reviews and uh, the experience. And go visit with someone, make sure you've got a good rapport with them. You want someone that is doing and well-trained in, in, in what they say they're doing. Okay. Um, yeah, as a double board certified facial plastic surgeon, I think we Dr. Mendelson, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go see him, right? Well, I really appreciate you coming on and chatting with us. This is a really interesting topic that I think a lot of people can relate to and they have questions about, and I think you are able to answer a lot of them. So we appreciate it. Thank you for Yeah, that. well, um, we hope you have a happy holidays. It's a little cold if you're stepping out the door. Uh, this 